Hello lovely people out there, Kevin from CC Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. And in this video, we'll take a look at three features for being creative with text in InDesign. But of course, always remember to keep readability in mind as well. With that said, let's jump into InDesign. First feature, wrap, where we wrap the text around an image and there is a panel for it under Windows and Text Wrap. And to use it, we need a shape. I have one here on the side and I select it and now I can activate a wrap. The first one is none, what we have right now. Next one is rectangular wrap. If I drag the shape over the text, you can see what happens. And we can also add padding over here and you can toggle the lock to change each side individually. And uh, lastly, we can constrain the text to a side. And right now it's wrapping on both sides, but if we change it to the left, the text only goes on the left side of the shape. And I pretty much only use left, right, and both, but you can experiment with the other options too. Next up is a shape wrap. And you can see the difference now. It wraps around the shape. And because of that, we only have one padding value as well. Wrap options are the same. And right now, these settings here are grayed out. But if we instead use an image, uh, I have one over here as well, we see they become available. Before we were wrapping around the bounding box, which is the first option, but now we can wrap around the content inside the box. And we have a few ways of doing it. InDesign can try and select the object for you. Might work if the background is clear. Detect edges is the old one, but now we can just use the select subject instead. And we see it doesn't, it does a decent job of it. Um, however, what I usually do, uh, because I already have it most of the time, is make a path in Photoshop and you can select like this and choose from the list here if the image contains multiple parts. Now you just add some padding and we have the text set around the picture. Next up, not really a feature, but something very simple that I think is easy to forget that you can actually do. Make a custom text box. It doesn't have to be a rectangle, it can be any shape. You could uh, warp a normal text box just press A for the selection tool, select some points, and then just move them, like so. Or something I really like, you could use a letter. So if I type a Z, and uh, just make it a bit larger, and uh, then we press Control alt o to convert it into an object, and we can just remove the fill as well. Then we click in the box with the type tool, and now we just put text in there. Something like that. Instantly very different and all you did was change the text box. Lastly, we can use the secondary type tool. And if you press and hold the type tool over here, we can instead select the type on path tool, which you can probably figure out what it does. And now we need a path. We could draw one with a pen tool, um, or we can simply just use a shape. For example, this circle. Then with the type, on path tool, simply click on the path. A tip, uh, the shortcut for the type tool is T, and if you hold shift and press T, it switches to the secondary tool. This works for other tools as well. And now we can type along the path. I'll just paste in some text for us. Maybe make it a bit larger, and I think I'll add some tracking to space it out. Something like that. So how do we work with this? You see these handles here? This is our start and our end point, and we can simply drag them to adjust. And you can hopefully kind of see how this is working. There is also a center point. It's rather hard to see it right now, but it is down here, and we can use it to move both endpoints at the same time, in this case, sort of rotate it around. And if you drag it inwards, it will flip the text to the inside. And here's a small tip as well. If these markers are hard to see because of contrast, if you change the layer color, which you can do by double clicking the layer, it will also change the color of the outlines. I just like magenta because it's often rather visible. And for more options, we can go to type and type on path and then options. And here we can customize it more. I'd say most of the time rainbow is probably the pick, but you can play around with the other effects, see what they do. And with align, we can change where the text aligns with the path. Honestly, just try them and see what fits your use case the best. And spacing, I don't really understand, to be honest. You could just use the handles instead. And we can also flip here like we already did with a center handle. 
and two path won't make any difference in this case since the path is rather symmetrical. All right, there you have it. Three ways of being creative with text in InDesign. And uh, that's all I had for this time. Hope you, it was helpful or at least interesting and see you in the next video right here on CC Pipe.